Hey, what's going on? Trev2323 here. I am just want to let you know that the removal of the rusty bolts of these shocks I did on another video. I did it the day before. just wanted to make sure I could uh, lube them up and get them off of WD-40. So check 2002 Chevy Astro rusty bolt removal. They'll be on there. This is actually how to get rid of, get the shocks off. What's going on? Rob here, Trev2323. All right, yesterday I shot the video how to loosen the bolts on a 2002 Chevy Astro Van LS. Uh, my shocks came in today. These are the Monroe Sensor Track Heavy Duties. One thing I wanted to show is leaf springs are what actually hold up the vehicle. So you can actually take the shocks off the vehicle with this sitting on the ground. Now the Haynes manual says you pick, it, it's, it, I really don't like because it says to pick up the van before you work on the shocks. But it doesn't say to pick it up from the axle or to pick it up from the frame. Another thing about these O2 Astro vans is what they got is uh, they develop ass sag, what people call it. Ass sag where the rear end sags. So a lot of people are saying that these Monroe Sensor Track heavy duties actually lift the van a little bit for that to compensate for that. But uh, they're a little bit harder to get in. So we're going to go over are they really harder to get in? And if what I'm going to show is if it does compensate for the ass sag. So what I plan on doing is we're going to measure from the ground to the rear of the bumper and that's about 13 and 7 8 maybe it's over 13 3 quarter about 13 and 7 8 7 8 inches now we're going to go ahead and put these on and see if it raises anything higher than that also look at the previous video because it shows how i get all the bolts off so i'm not going to show you lifting the van again and getting the bolts off after all the bolts are off i'm going to show you removing the shock all right be right back shooting this because these are brand new shocks I got from Amazon.com I just got them in today and I was so happy that I got them in but I wanted to show you that they came in and they already have rust develop on them the rust right all around here now this one right here has the I mean this is just a rubber shock so you don't hear it banging on the uh, on the metal the spring this one is actually slid up and it's completely rusted around the back right there so I'm actually gonna send this to amazon.com and the pictures of it because I mean I'm, I already got my other shocks out so I gotta put them on but I don't appreciate having to put on a brand new shock that's probably gonna rust out within a couple years okay moment of truth here I took the nut out already you see that that one's actually moved already so that's loose here's the top one right here I actually because did loosen it all the way up being a lazy ass without taking the spare tire down okay this screw is not going to come out right here because that screw right there is next to the AC line okay so the shock got to go out that way and then you know you could probably take it off the bottom first and out that way but there's a big washer right here so when I take everything off I lay it down exactly how I took it off right there alright so the bottom slid right out okay so there's the top hanging so hopefully I can get the top out which is sliding out without having to take the spare tire off okay so there's the shock right here that's the first shock removed right there okay it came right out right here came right out the top I'm thinking uh, you know after the fact I should have brought some Eastwood uh, rust uh, sealer right now a rust converter and did all rust converter since I had this off but since I didn't think about it ahead of time, I just took that shock off and I'm about to put the other shock on. Okay, now there's the shocks that I got. This is the, you know, you know the rusted one is the one that I just took off. And this is the heavy duty one. So I am going to have to compress that one to get it in there. So there, there goes my fight right there, having to compress it to get it in there. Most people said that they've used a jack to jack it up or a pry bar to get on but there's never any videos so I'm gonna try to get you a video of how I'm gonna put it on I'm gonna start finagling it first and then probably come back to you let you know how it actually worked it's hanging you see the shock hanging there already okay the spring part goes on the top on these GM's apparently I was able to get it up on the nut without taking the spare tire off so, so you, it is possible although if you do lean it up here that's a huge difference I'm gonna have to jack that sucker up to get it to fit in there so I do have a jack uh, I think that's gonna be my problem right there so let's see what's going on here this is how I'm going there's about three inch difference that you got to lift this jack with this stroke I mean the shock with 
So I'm lifting it with another jack. This is a two and a quarter ton, although it's not a racing jack, a low profile like that one. So I actually had to take the cup out, but it worked better because it sat right in the hole right there. So I lifted it up. I'm jacking it up. I'm almost there right now. I'm going to see if I can lift it up a little bit more to get that screw in there. But let me tell you this. The pressure that I'm putting on this, that actually is under a lot of pressure right there. So I'm going to go ahead and try to lift it up more and then get the bolt in there. Alright, here's the problem I'm having after all. I actually had to put a piece of block in here because the little bit of this sank into the hole where it couldn't come all the way up. Actually, when I took the jack out, since this was compressed in here, it went right in here and the shock wouldn't even come out of this and the holes are too far back where I can't get the nut in there so what I'm going to get now is something to kind of wedge in the back to try to push it forward so I can get the bolt in there everything's in what's worrying me is this actually looks kind of close to this right here so maybe it should go further away when I get a nut in when I get a nut in here but my problem right now is I got it jacked up and I needed a jack there's no way I could have compressed this as much as it had to be compressed but the bolt is not lining up to get in there and it's too far back so I have to wedge something in here to push it frontwards a little bit so if I were to do this again I'd probably put a, maybe even a screwdriver just sitting in the back while I'm jacking this up to keep it pushed forward alright gotta thank my dad for helping me on this one right here alright <laughs> I want my dad a case of Budweiser okay now on the screw I don't think it's gonna make any difference as long as the bolt is through remember the bolt was on this side right here well the bolts gonna be on the other side what we wound up having to do was compress it with the with it with another jack because that's gonna be a, a big difference in, in weight and then this right here actually leaned up against the back right here where we could not get the bolts all the way through so what my dad had was these uh, antique punches he had downstairs he used this little punch to actually push through on this side to move the shock forward and then tapped this punch in and finagled it with this punch while I was finagling it with this punch on the other side. We, we moved it forward and were able to get the bolt through. So like I said, if you didn't see it, let me try to put this higher. My dad actually used this one on one side to put through the bolt right here and pull it frontwards. And when he got enough room to put the bigger one in, he put the bigger one in tapped it in and moved it around yeah, to, center the hole. To, to center the hole so I can put the bolt through and this side I worked this one and the bolt is all the way through so this shock is on right now I'm gonna go ahead and put the other bolt in and tighten that one up right there all right I'm under here now doing the passenger side one this is the one that you got to be a little careful because when you break, take off the bottom one I see it right here when you take off the bottom one this is your emergency brake line that's in here so yeah, it's going to be a pain, little bit more pain in the butt. I did take off the bottom bolt, and it came out right away. Really easy, just slid right out. I thought it was going to be rusted in there. Now the top one is up here by the muffler. So I guess maybe with the condensation from the muffler or something, this bolt was really rusted. So if you're going to do this job, go ahead and saturate that like the night before. And on the top ones, there's a washer and a nut. Just lay the washer and nut down. I, uh, yeah, the washer nut up exactly how you took it off so you know how that nut's going to go back in. Now this one right here, there's a, a plate, a uh, heat shield plate. So I'm trying to finagle this one out of the heat shield plate. It should be able to come out. And then I got to try to bring it down underneath the, uh, hold on, I might have to put the camera down. Put the camera down. Okay, I had to hit it off with my hand to get it off, but then I'm going to put it, bring it down underneath the uh, emergency brake line to get it out. Now the other one's longer, so it's going to be a little bit rougher to try to get it through there. One thing I wanted to show you where I replaced them, this is the shock fully extended like it should be on the van, and then if you press on the shock, it just goes all the way down it doesn't even come back up that's why I had to replace it okay I'm putting the jack in towards the front right here you got the muffler pipe right here and you got the emergency brake line right here I don't know if you can see it right here yeah, the emergency brake line right here 
So what we decided to do was you could <laughs> you couldn't get the angle. You couldn't get this the uh, strut right here far enough to get it in this. So what we decided to do was push that bolt as far through that way as I could push it through sticking out. I put the a strut in of uh, the shock in exactly where it should be and then my father pushed the bolt all the way back through right there came in no problem I'm gonna put the nut on right now not tighten it up so I can finagle this back end of it all right I was using this right here to put in here so when I jacked it up this time it would be more centered two things you got to watch out for here I was trying to hold it in place and then finally when the shock jumped up into place my finger was actually in there so my finger actually got smashed a little bit not bad between here so do not stick your fingers in there and for two this was so long that once it got to a point it worked perfect but then it, the jack couldn't go up anymore so I'm at square I did this the exact same thing on the other side but I'm seeing if there's any other way I can get that in place right now okay this actually wound up very easy and perfect this is actually how we did it right here my dad had this little actually this is a little crowbar but at the end of the crowbar it's curved up for you to be able to put it like a tire on a rim and so what happens is I tried to wedge something in here to keep the shock from going front or, or, or actually going backwards when you're uh, putting it on when you're jacking it up so I'm gonna after I put this bolt on this bolt is on pretty good okay I can take it down now so you can see what happens here okay so this crowbar has a curved edge that actually sits right up in here with the block on the block so when you're jacking it up it's keeping the shock frontwards and giving you enough room to move it to get that bolt right through and that went on just like butter so I'm gonna tighten this all up and then go over everything okay this is uh, all right i'm here finishing up the job right here uh everything is on people say it's like a number two job if you're going to work on the car yourself do i think anybody can do it yes i think anybody can do it uh you will need more than just the basic tools to get them on these are the heavy duty ones with the springs man they're about two or three inch longer than a regular shock so what we had to do was we had to jack it up to compress it you put the top one on first well, hopefully you can hear me with all this work in the background. You put the top one on first, and then you put the bottom one after that. But you have to have a jack to compress it up. Now, if you just use a jack to compress it up, you're not going to be able to get that bolt through. So you have to have something to wedge between there, kind of, so when you're jacking it up, it slides to the front so you get the bolt through. So let's go ahead and see if it's any higher. It was like 13 and 7 8. And it's almost 15 inches right now so I gained a whole inch by putting these Monroe sensor track heavy duties on the van really surprised the heck out of me I didn't think that would happen but it did so either way thanks for watching please subscribe I do all kind of videos subscribe 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 thank you